Have you ever felt the weight of being utterly lost? Lost in the labyrinth of your own despair. Being too far lost in the labyrinth weighs heavily upon the soul, suffocating hope with its crushing burden. However, in life's labyrinth, where darkness reigns supreme, there shines a beacon of hope, a light beyond the reach of despair. And in the heart of the labyrinth stands the eternal light, light in the labyrinth.
Let's have our group discussions by benches. Thank you.
Please wrap up your discussions with the prayer band. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and welcome to our Vesper service. In tonight's worship, we will be having the 10th session of AUP Academy's Week of Prayer with the theme, Light in the Labyrinth. For our inspiration, we will be singing two songs. For the first song, let us all sing, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love.
our second song, let us all sing, Standing on the Promises. Good evening and happy Sabbath, everyone. On behalf of Academy Religious Club, I welcome you all to our 10th session of our week of prayer. It is with great joy and gratitude that we gather together to come and worship our Creator God. As we embark on this journey of prayer, reflection, and fellowship, let us remember the power of unity and the strength that comes from joining our hearts and voices in worship. Throughout this week, we came together in prayer to seek guidance, find solace, and express gratitude for the blessings in our lives. In the past few days, we learned about the topics, guiding light, the right way, the unfinished masterpiece, your choice, vital connection, trusted guide, wise counsel, enabled reason, and lastly, learning from your own and others' experience. And I hope that we may listen and learn from our speaker, Brother Jim Miguel Ramirez, this evening as he shares the message of God with the topic, Following Marks. And a few announcements that we will be having our Grand Sunrise Worship tomorrow at Centennial Park, 5 a.m. Grand Sundown Worship at Centennial Park as well, 5 p.m. Thank you and have a blessed Sabbath. For our opening song, let us all stand and sing our theme song, Light in the Labyrinth. Woo! 
Good evening, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Our pen of inspiration today is found in the book of Luke 21, 28. But when these things begin to take place, strengthen up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Life can be tough, but, when, but we can find strength in knowing that better days are ahead with God. So let's stay strong, keep our heads up, and remember that God will truly deliver us from our distress. Thank you. Saul Neil. and kind, loving Heavenly Father, dear Lord, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Lord, praises be unto your name, for you have given us another chance of life. You have sustained us through another week, dear Lord. Um, Lord, it is through you that it, uh, it is made possible through you that we have the air to breathe, the light to see your greatness and the sounds, so that we may hear uh, and sing your praises, dear Lord. Creation rests in your hands, and we are forever in awe of them, of your creation, dear Lord, for it reflects your greatness and your beauty. Lord, your love is also abundant to each and every one of us. Lord, even though we try to fill the ocean with ink, and use it to write about write it uh, use it to write about your love, dear Lord. It will not be successful. It would be insufficient, dear Lord, to write about your insurmountable love. <laughs>
great God, Heavenly Father, we come to you with humble hearts and sincerity, as you have seen against you. This boring moment, we confess to you our iniquities and shortcomings, whether it is through our actions, words, or thoughts. Forgive us for the many times that we have neglected your will and for failing to do what's righteous towards our brothers and sisters. Forgive us for also choosing to please this world and ourselves over what is right according to your words. We are nothing without you, Lord, which is why we ask for your holy presence within our hearts so that we'll be able to resist the worldly temptations around us. We also thank you, Lord, for saving us on the cross so that our hearts and minds will be cleansed. Thank you for the assurance that you will forgive us, for you are faithful and just to forgive, in the same way that we will forgive those who have done us wrong. to you tonight in thanksgiving for the many blessings we have experienced this week of prayer thank you for the previous speakers who have delivered your message thank you for the bond that you have shared with our classmates and teachers and thank you for the spiritual revival that we have experienced especially that we had busy weeks prior to this event may we learn to share our blessings with others and not keep it to ourselves thank you for your generosity because it shows your great love to us. I pray that may your spirit of gratitude and joy fill within our hearts to uplift your holy name. And at this hour, may you please accept the prayers and the thanksgiving of your people. before you, asking you to pour out your Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us understand your message for tonight's Vesper service, as each and every one of us pray for our needs, wants, and plans, may your will be done, and teach us to be patient and accept your answer, relying on you, the light in the labyrinth, the best counselor, our provider, and the only one who sees our finish line.
in our life, we always make decisions. Should I start living healthy? Should I stop my bad habits? Should I go to church today or should I just sleep? Should I work out or should I just stay, up, stay at home and relax? Questions we often ask ourselves in which we know which is right from wrong. But what happens when you have to, ma to make different decisions? Because we know that. But when you have to make decisions that is neither right nor wrong. Decisions we are clueless about. Should I take a doctorate or should I get a job? Should I take this job or that job? Should I marry this person? I love her. She has great personalities. But is she really the one God wants for me? My topic this evening is entitled, Follow Waymarks. Throughout the past sessions of our week of prayer, we have encountered several topics about decision-making, starting with Wednesday AM with the topic, Praying for Guidance When Making Decisions, followed by Consulting the Bible When Making Decisions, Seeking Wise Counsel When, while, when Making Decisions, Submitting Your Will to God When Making Decisions, Learning from Your Own and Others' Experience When Making Decisions, and tonight, the topic that I'm going to share to you all, sensing God's providential leadings when making decisions. As you travel through the labyrinth, look for the way marks. God works through circumstances to give us direction. When you have dil diligently studied the Bible, prayed, sought wise counsel, and considered all options, it is appropriate to ask God for signs. Now, how can you be so sure that God is leading you? How can you be so sure that it is not your own mind that's, that's leading you, your own thoughts? Have you ever wondered, how can I know God's will? How do you know when God is guiding you? Imagine that there are two choices between before you that can completely change your life. Um, whether there are two college courses or two jobs that you both want, two opportunities before you. And you're wondering, you're confused, you do not know what to do. Will God guide you? What about if you're contemplating about marriage? Will God guide you in that area? The good thing is that the Bible promises us that God will guide us. The Bible promises us that as we seek His will, He will give us direction. If you're perplexed about the future, here's God's message for you. In Psalms 32 verse 8, I, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. When we do not know what to do, we know just what to do, to seek God in prayer. Now, how can you be so sure that it is God who is leading you? How can you be so sure that it's not simply your own minds, your own thoughts that's leading you? Is there a difference between a divine conviction and a human impulse? There's one way that we can tell the difference. So. Human impulse is flighty. It is often here today. I decide to do something. Maybe I should somehow, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should take this job, maybe I shouldn't. So human impulse is often here today. We feel like we ought to do it, but we wait a few days, a week, a few weeks, and the situation passes, and you don't feel the same way anymore. A divine conviction is a growing, constant awareness that you cannot shake, that God's leading you in that area. So when I feel I ought to do something, the more important the decision is, the longer time I'll, I'll take to make it. The less important the decision is, the quicker I have to make it. Now, 
do we have to pray about every decision we make in life? I don't think so. God has given us brain, minds, to make a decision. When you walk into your closet and you saw a beige and a dark green shirt, do you, have to, do you kneel down and pray, Oh Lord, which shirt should I wear today? No, God has given me a mind. I do not want to, to wear something that is uncomfortable or that won't match my outfit. But look, these kinds of decisions, God has given us mind to make. When we pray about something, we don't check our brains at the door. We pray, we seek God, we follow certain principles. Then we believe God leading our mind to make the best possible decision. Now, tonight, um, there are six basic principles of guidance that I would like to share to all of you. So the first principle is God wants to guide you. In Psalms 32 verse 8, it says here, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with the eye upon you. Isaiah 58 verse 11, I will guide you continually. James 1 verse 5, The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. Believe that God wants to guide you. When you make a big decision in life, know that God wants to guide you. Now, the second aspect of guidance is to commit your life into doing God's will. We find that here in the life of Jesus, in the book of Hebrews 10 verse 7. Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll, I have come to do your will, my God. If you are committed to do God's will, you can know he'll guide you. But if you want to just run off on and do your own thing, he will let you. But you must know that there are consequences. As I believe God's gonna guide me, as I'm praying about the decision God wants me to make, I'll say, Lord, I only want your will. If you want me to follow this job, I'm gonna follow it. If you want me to marry this person, I'm gonna marry her. But you have to let me know that it is your will. Give me clarity, O oh Lord. Help me understand what you want me to do. Help me be able to know your will. And God, if you reveal it, I will do it. For our, th for our third principle, analyze your motives. Why do you want what you want? Analyze the motives of your heart. Analyze the desires of your mind. In James 4 verse 3, it says here, When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Were these people asking for something? Yes. Were they praying about it? Definitely. But did they get answers? No. Why not? Because their motives were not pure. You ask and you do not receive? Because you ask and you consume, consume it on your own lust and pleasures. So they weren't seeking God's will. They had their own agenda when they came to God. They believed that what they wanted was what they were going to pursue in spite of God's will. So they, they didn't have guidance. When we come to God, we say, Lord, purify my heart so that I may know your will. The fourth principle is to look, look into the Bible and see if there's any biblical principle that can guide us. We find that here in Psalms 119 verse 24, your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. And in Psalms 119 verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the first four principles again, 
The first one is to believe God is gonna guide you. Number two, believe that He will guide you as you surrender your will unto Him and only want what He wants. Number three is to analyze your motives. And number four, look for biblical principles. Now, here is the fifth principle. The fifth principle of God's guidance is to find godly, to find godly counselors that you can counsel with. We find that in the book of Proverbs. As we look there at the book of Proverbs 11, 14, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Where, what is there in the multitude of counselors? There is safety. And in Proverbs 15, verse 22, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. When you have to make critical decisions, who do you go to? When you're uncertain, do you have a few people that are praying, that are seeking God's guidance, that you have confidence in, that you can call them anytime and say, I have a problem on this. I'm faced with this decision. In my personal life, I can say that there are probably around three people that as I am praying about something, as I am weighing it out, as I believe God is going to guide me, as I'm looking into the Bible, sometimes I know I can talk to them. Sometimes you don't find answers directly in Scripture. You may find Scriptures. You may find principles, but God is not going to tell you in Scripture, become a doctor, marry this woman. We're not going to be able to read a Bible verse that says, choose this job, not that job. He will guide us, certainly. So you're looking at the whole picture. And as you do, it is helpful to get counsel because God is going to guide you through those counselors. And he will, understand, he will help you understand the direction to take. Our sixth principle is to look for the providences of God. Look for the providences of God. These are God's ways. And we may find in Proverbs 23, verse 26, My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. If you are a, a young person and you're thinking about marriage, it is something we cannot easily decide on. But other than marriage, we there are still a few that you're locked into for the rest of your life. And so if you believe that God is guiding you in a certain job and you make a, you move in that direction and then three years later, you recognize that this job is not for me. You could just, you could always back up from that. You could always say, God, you put me there for a purpose, but maybe, Maybe you have something else for me. So you don't have to wait to make a decision on most things until every single thing is clear. What you have to do to make a decision for God is to have the conviction that this is God's will. There may be certain unknowns out there, but you know something is God's will because you have been praying about it. You have been getting count counsel about it you have seen providences in it then you move ahead by the name and the glory of Christ God longs to guide you God wants to guide you God will guide you when you open your heart to him as you put these principles in life it's gonna make a dramatic difference in your life happy Sabbath everyone
for your care. Ringing all my silent screams, reaching for a fleeting dream. In the labyrinth of my thoughts, I strive to find a reason to survive. See 
seeking to be free.
Let us all stand for our theme song. for your willingness to guide us. Thank you for the wisdom in store in heaven for us. Thank you for your spirit that gives us the ability to make the right choice. So in our everyday lives, we can live for you. We can honor your name. Thank you so much for encouraging us to live a life fully and wholly dependent upon your words and upon your work. These things we offer unto you, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 